Welcome back. Here's the mysterious box. So this is the article in question, is it? Yes, yeah, quite fancy. This small box deposited with the pawnbroker by Mr. McGilded two months ago. And on the night of Mr. Windybank's murder, the only item on the shelves that was touched by whoever broke into the shop. Quick, quick, let's open it and see what's inside. It is a player. Good gracious. It's no ordinary box, it seems, but it's a player of the tube type. Or can it play both? Hmm. Wow. Although in truth, I had an inkling that might be the case. It would appear that the box has a miniature music box movement. Then, is it too much to expect? I think it would be reasonable to assume that it is a device for the playback of this disc, my lord. No, it's got that tube element as well, unless it translates it into a tube, a cylinder. It's got the central prong for holding a disc. Hmm, we'll see. Yes, but I have one at home, yes. So, here we have the means to play back Mr. McGilded's disc, deposited at Windybanks at much the same time. Not strictly correct, my lord. It was not McGilded's disc. It was the disc of his victim in the omnibus. But why, for heaven's sake? Are we to understand that the brickmaker was trying to sell this music box disc to Mr. McGilded? I have a question. I believe the answer will become clear if we listen to the music box on the disc, my lord. Yes, very well. Let the court now listen to this curious disc at last. Hold it! Wait, my lord. Good grief. What is the meaning of this, Inspector? The music Bosk and the disc are um, They're unrelated to the case. No, no need to spoil the, uh, the somber atmosphere in the courtroom with some silly bit of music. Objection! This disc may very well have motivated the culprit in this case to commit murder. Clearly, there's every chance that it's fundamentally important to understanding what happened. Prosecution has no objection. But, but no. Piece of evidence of police property. Clearly, Scotland Yard has some vested interest here. But it is policy of this prosecutor to leave no avenues unexplored. And you, Inspector, have no jurisdiction here to prevent that from happening. No further delays, please. Play the disc. Morse code. Do it. What's it actually saying in Morse code? That's the thing, I, I, I know it's Morse code, but I have no idea what. What on earth? That's certainly not what I would call music. No. It's just the same note playing over and over again in an irregular sequence. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Graydon. This, this really is priceless. After all that, the music box is broken. It's Morse code. Broken? It, it can't be, can it? Well, obviously. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised. If the officer sent to fetch it didn't drop it on the way back to the courtroom. Well, with much regret, I feel the court must accept that this music box offers little in the way of clues. Are you ready to move on, counsel? Come on. Yes. All right, it does sound as though it's completely broken, but is it? Could this music emanating from the music box possibly be a new clue? It could be a clue. 
I believe that it could be relevant, my lord. Good lord. But, but how can it be? It's an abomination, Captain. Mere noise, I fail to see how it can have any meaning whatsoever. It does sound strange, I agree. There's one thing bothering me. While Graydon stands there chortling victoriously, the inspector besides him has a rather turning expression on his face. It's as if Gregson recognizes the sound, as if he's familiar with it somehow. That's making him appear extremely on edge. If that's the stance of the defense, my Nipponese friend, answer me this. Uh oh. Just what relevance do you propose this woeful chiming has on this case? The defense is believed that the sound emanating from this music box is not supposed to be music. Just because this is a music box, it doesn't necessarily mean the sounds we're hearing are music. That's got him. Look at that. The smile vanished from Graydon's lips as soon as I said it. On the right lines here. I must be. <laughs> Making deductions based on how people react to what you say. Acting just like Hurley, Runo. Objection! The sounds we're hearing aren't necessarily music. Now that you've told us what they are not. I'm sure the court would like to hear what they are. Do enlighten us, my Nipponese friend. Well, um... Surely you have an idea in mind. Because if not... It will be the death of your ill-informed argument. Exactly. The music box is clearly broken. Refusing to accept that fact is pure foolishness. You've got me. I don't know what the answer is... yet. Um, Runo? I've just examined the music box very thoroughly. And I'm fairly certain that it's not broken at all. Really? Really? The way it's been made, it can only produce a single note anyway. Thank you, Iris. Alright. If the music box isn't broken, it must mean that the sound it's producing have some significance that isn't musical. Could it be? Is that what these sounds are? Something's just struck me, Runo. Feel like recently, in the past few hours even, I've heard another sound very much like this one the music box makes. Yes, it's a familiar sound. Actually, Iris, I was just thinking exactly the same thing. I'm going to have to press the defense for an answer. If your assertion is that the sound produced by this music box is not in fact music at all, then what the devil is it, counsel? All the evidence we've seen so far, all the testimony we've heard, it's all pointed to one single answer now. The prosecution demands that my learned Nipponese friend presents proof now tangible proof of this latest wild speculation. Alright then. This could be the best chance I'm going to get to fight back in this trial. If I'm right, it's going to join all the dots together. The evidence that explains the true nature of the sounds on this music box disc. It's gotta be the newspaper. Because of the secrets being leaked. It's gotta be. Today's paper, Council. The headline is Pawnbroker Perishes in Pick Purse Plunder. Hardly supportive of your case. Ah, no, my lord. I was hoping you'd look a little further down the page. Further down? 
Ministry Mole, classified secrets may have been leaked overseas from Ministry of Justice. Yes, it's a very serious matter. Being investigated at the highest level, I understand. I have heard that international transmissions along supposedly secure lines are somehow being intercepted and leaked to various other countries. And presumably, those transmissions are in the form of wire telegrams. Of course. Journal number five. Your input, please. Stop. Uh, oh. M Misa? Whatever is the matter? You told the court before that you worked at the same communication station as Mr. Graydon, did you not? N yes, that's correct. And that particular station where you work. Deals with government communications and newspaper reports. Oh, yes. We're not your run-of-the-mill communication station at all. Our work is extremely important. Then tell me. Is this not a very familiar sound? Hmm? You... You don't mean to say... Is it... That's right. Madam. It bears more than a passing resemblance to the sound made by your telegraph machine as you tap it. I believe it's called Morse code. But I don't believe it. Now correct me if I'm wrong. When it comes to leaking telegrams from government departments, there could be nobody more perfectly placed than a highly skilled communications officer. But are you suggesting that the music box disc contains stolen government secrets in Morse code? Oh my, oh my, I knew what it said anyway. Oda, oda, please everyone, oda. But this, this is, this is high treason council, deserving of capital punishment. Too much new vocabulary. What is this treason and what is capital punishment? What sorts of words I'd half expect you to know. For our sovereign government's confidential information, stone nations would surely pay almost any price. Yes, and on that night two months ago, it was the very negotiation that was taking place inside the omnibus. But in the end, McGillie perished, and the all-important disc lay unclaimed in the pawnbroker. My word! In which case, who would store that information in the first place? Would surely have been beside himself with worry. Because if the disc were to be discovered before it found its way out of the country, it would reveal an act of high treason, punishable by death. So the culprit had no choice but to retrieve it. In order to do that, he would have to gain entry to the pawnbroker illegally in the middle of the night. Because the article left behind by Mr. McGilded would incriminate him too much if he got it into the wrong hands. Isn't that right, Mr. Graydon? You... You think I've been stealing government secrets? Preposterous. Absolutely preposterous. So, in response to the defense's accusation, you claim complete innocence, do you? Well, of course I do. I've had to stand here in silence while the pretentious foreign lawyer has been prattling away. Objection! Then by all means, counter the charges, sir. The prosecution demands the witness testifies in response to the accusations brought by the defense. Delighted, I'm sure. The witness is reminded that the crime under scrutiny in this trial is the murder of the pawnbroker, Mr. Windybank. That being a most flagitious offence, for which the law of the land sanctions a capital punishment. But the heinous act of high treason is no less a serious crime. I urge you to bear in mind that you testify, Mr. Graydon. So then, let us proceed. Oh, yeah. You gotta let us have a rabbit and porky, eh, Governor? You got things to say? 
I beg your pardon? Who do you think you are? Name's Nash Skulkin. Occupation is professional baddie. Name is Ringo Skulkin. But we ain't baddies enough to sell out our own motherland. That's right. Who what they call uh, the three three Skulkin? Back to the three Skulkin brothers. Okay. Bad timing, fellas. Very bad timing. Witness testimony. Graydon's counter. A mere communications officer couldn't possibly steal confidential government information. Besides, the sounds produced by that music box aren't even Morse code. It was some low-class brickmaker negotiating with McGilded anyway, was it not? I have no relation to the man. Look, all we've done is break into the gaff the other night like we were told to do. If we'd known there was dodgy government secrets involved, we wouldn't have touched it. Alright. Um, Mr. and Mr. Skulkin? Uh, one Mr. will do, Governor. What's up? Do I take it that you now admit to the crime? That on the night in question, you did indeed gain entry to the premises illegally? And moreover, you did so as a party of three, in collaboration with Mr. Graydon here. We did, Gov, we did. Oh my, I knew they were rotten. Hide and down, please. What say you to that, Mr. Graydon? I have no idea what these two ruffians are referring to. You let her are getting us mixed up in all this monkey business. Never said nothing about no government secrets. It was supposed to be a straight job. What about the Gizu shop it was, eh? Or a bloke didn't have to die, did he? Ah. Nice to know who your friends are. Whatever these men say, I deny the accusations. Indeed. Well, I certainly wasn't expecting this little music box to become so significant in the proceedings. However, as it has, I will admit it into the court record as evidence. The small box has been entered into the court record. The strange music box only appears to be able to play a single note. Or tone. Isn't it odd that note and tone have the same letters? It was deposited at Windybanks two days before the black overcoat. Cross-examination, then. Graydon's counter. A mere communications officer couldn't possibly steal government, confidential government information. Besides, the sounds produced by that music box aren't even Morse code. There's some low-class brickmaker negotiating with McGilded anyway, was it not? I have no relation to the man, and then it goes off to those two. Now, the one that's pointing out to me, to me here is that, well, if it's not Morse code, what is it then? Hold it! They're not. To anyone with a brain, that would be blatantly apparent on listening to that music box for even a few seconds. Of course, of course. Surely it can't be that my learned friend is unfamiliar with Morse code. Ouch. Looks genuinely shocked at my ignorance. <laughs> I would be more than happy to demonstrate the basics for you, sir. A, a lesson here in court. Morse code is a continuous series of two distinct tones. Tones, you say? Yes, a short dot and a long dash. By combining those in different ways, you construct letters. I see. For example, this is A, and this is B. My question is, like, maybe it's just half of it, then? Maybe it's just the short notes? Maybe there's... Because he kept going about how there was a second disc, and maybe the second disc is the long notes, and you play them together. But when you listen to the sound produced by this music box, you only hear one tone, don't you? But... But it sounds so similar. The rhythm of it is the same in everything. But there's no discernible meaning to this apparent random sequence of sounds. So your assertion is fundamentally flawed. This is not a Morse code. 
No. Seems to be the short notes. <laughs> really, you shouldn't be so surprised. What did I tell you? That music box is nothing but a worthless piece of scrap. Perhaps you might consider studying your subject matter before casting aspersions in the future. Oh, stop. Nothing to say, but stop. Oh, it's so frustrating, isn't it? Iris? I mean, if the government secrets were somehow being neat using the music box, so many other things would slot into place so nicely. Would there still be something I haven't considered? Would it really be impossible to use this music box somehow to play back Morse code? Hmm... Give it a try. We've got spare lives. There's still every possibility that this music box was instrumental in leaking of government secrets. That's the belief of the defense, at least. Objection! Does it please you in some way, my Nipponese friend, to repeat the same line of argument ad infinitum? Let's actually look at it then, to be honest. We should have done that. Maybe there's something going on here. Okay, so what we got? This is the mechanism that turns the bumps on the disc into sound, isn't it? Yes, the movement. It's all thanks to the comb with its teeth that are plucked by the passing bumps. Usually the teeth on the comb are different lengths, so that each one produces a different tone. Right, that's what I was wondering. Like, how is it producing different tones if it should do and stuff like that? But this comb is very strange. All the teeth are exactly the same length. See, I was thinking it was how far they were away from, like, the circumference, but all right, if that's the reason, that's fine. Well, what does that mean? It means that no matter which tooth is plucked, by the passing bumps, the music box will make the same sound. I've never seen a music box like it before. Yes, it is strange. A music box that can only be played at can only play a single note. Why is there a lever? There has to be some significance to that, surely. Like there. Like wh why? This is the mechanism that turns the bumps on the disc into sound, isn't it? Yes, the movement. It's all thanks to the comb with its teeth that are plugged by the passing bumps. Usually, the teeth on the comb are di different lengths, so they each produce a different tone. You know, this, but the comb is very strange. The teeth are exactly the same length. Oh, what does that mean? So I wish teeth is plugged. Yeah, yeah, we know this bit. Jewel on the front, no? Uh huh. So what's that then? Oh! But what is it, Runa? I've, I've just noticed something about this music box. It looks like the bottom of it opens up as well. Ah! Y you're right! Well, come on then. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Alright then. Here goes. Second disc, like it's got the second disc that we've not even seen, is gonna play the long notes. Still, what's that little lever for, though? Look at that. There's another movement on the underside. So, does that mean we can set another disc play back on this side? Yes, I think so. It looks like the two movements are linked together. They're linked. So, if you have two discs, they both play back at the same time. Yeah, that's gonna be what it is. We need another disc that plays the long notes. Who would have thought there would be a second movement on the underside of the box? And this movement is like the other one. The comb's teeth are all the same length. This movement also only produces a single tone, like the other one. Yes, it must do. Except that the length of the teeth on the two combs isn't the same. So the single tone produced by this movement will be different to the single tone we've already heard. What? Basically, each movement can only produce a single note. The notes they produce are different. The music box that can only play two tones. I mean, that's it. That's all we needed, really, wasn't it? So is it meant to be standing like that? I'm trying to make it as flat as possible. Like there. I'm going to be standing like that. 
I mentioned so. Right, so we've got that now. Does it please you in some way, my nephew's friend, to repeat the same line of argument ad infinitum? It's already been established that to be in Morse code, two tones are required, dots and dashes. Yes, I'm well aware of that. Then what? Well, it would appear the defense has a hypothesis to put forward. You had better present your idea at once, counsel. How do you propose that this music box, which appears to produce only a single tone, well we know it doesn't now, could have been used to cipher secret messages into Morse code? I mean, do I just play at that? Got it. Yes, this is it then. I have to open it up, don't I? It appears you know what's coming, counsel. Yep. Clearly that was an answer given in desperation by one floundering to substantiate his argument. No. It was one being pointing out, look, there's a button. And then I would press the button and show you what's inside, you buffoon. Gah! Oh, is it that obvious? I'm sure you're on the right lines, Runo. There's something about that music box. It has to be. Continue with the cross-examination, Council. No, I want to go back to that. Just because you think you'd got me, you didn't. Um, I shouldn't present on that. I should press and then we get back down to that point, so... Oh no, that, that's a different line, isn't it? Wait, what did he say then? It was some low class brickmaker negotiating with McGilded anyway, was it not? I have no relation to the man. Hold it. So, two months ago in that omnibus, McGilded killed the brickmaker and stole the disc. Mr. Mason was a single man with almost nothing to his name. It seems he lived in an artisan quarter some years ago, but people there remember little about him. That doesn't make much sense, though, does it? How would a humble brickmaker come to acquire secret government information? How indeed? There must have been somebody else involved behind the scenes in all of this. Somebody who acquired the disc and gave it to Mr. Mason. In order to take it to the meeting with McGilded and negotiate a deal. Dear me. You may have it in for me, sir, but I assure you, I have far more class than that. I'm a brickmaker from an artisan quarter, and this well-to-do communications officer. If only I could find some evidence to link the two of them together. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think we've got anything. Unless... this blood? I can't really get a blood sample from the omnibus, can we? Because... Wait, are we... If we could get the glove... Maybe we could blast it and see... Because, like... What I'm thinking is, like, if there's some relation, maybe it's literal. Maybe there's some relation, and maybe, like... And that's how the blood samples are produced. It's got the purple there. Oh no, because this is purple. Yeah, I was thinking maybe like they could be tied together like if they were both green or something like that. So, okay, that's not it. Hmm. If you have nothing more to add on that note, let's return to the witness's testimony. I'm gonna go back though. Oh, we are we done praying to the gaffer of a night with Right there. Nope. Press. Press. Hold it! Right. Just gotta wait now. Has it really gone this long previously? Try. Objection. Jeez, did it really go on this this long? I want to get back here so I can press the button. Oh, what is it, Runo? 
I've, I just noticed something about this music box. It looks like the bottom of it opens up as well. We knew this already. Look, what do you mean you just know it? We knew this! Yeah, we know there's a number of... Didn't we know! We know! We know this! Game! Game! We already covered this! Literally already covered it. We're only here to present it. Got it! Good gracious, what am I looking at here? Enough a movement on the underside of the music box. What? It appears, my lord, that the two movements are linked together. In other words, you can put two discs in the music box, and the sound of both will play back at the same time. Good heavens! As the court has heard, Morse code comprises of two tones, a short dot and a long dash. With a second disc in place, the music box could be used to generate Morse code and convey a message. Oh, that's quite, quite, quite. I've got one at home that does that. This is beyond a joke. I'm sorry. This poor excuse for a lawyer has absolutely no evidence to support his claims. No, of course. If my learned friend were able to present the court with the second disc, that'd be another matter. Well. Ah, well, yeah, I, I, I can't at the moment. Hmm. And may I remind the court, as the witness has pointed out, he was not the one in the omnibus who McGilded two months ago, striking a deal over the disc or discs. Indeed. That was Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. Exactly. I had nothing whatsoever to do with it. And though it has holes, I must admit the argument presented by the defense has much promise. I believe the cross-examination should continue. The link between Graydon and the victim of the onerous case must be there somewhere. But I haven't found it yet. Oh dear. Looks like you need to give your argument more strength, Bruno. Hmm. Reiterate your testimony if you please, Mr. Graydon. Well, I still want to press Graydon on stuff, but we've only got the first statement now, haven't we? I must, though, I maintain exactly what I did at the start of this pointless cross-examination. So, what we shall do then is end this part here, and in the next part, press him on the first one, because that's the only thing we've got left with Graydon, and then it goes off to the brothers. We're really not on the same lines at this point, but they may have something to add. It's just I want to keep on grading at this point. So, we'll see you in the next part. Bye for now.